Welcome to Collecting Chaos, and today I got a hodgepodge of stuff for you. I've got some toys, I've got some comics, I've got some comics from the comic shop, I got a little modeling, I got a little bit done on the Hulk model, and I figured I'd show you what I did. Uh, oh, and I got some mail. And you're going to see it all right here, right now, if you keep watching. Here's what I picked up at the comic shop. Batman number 97. The regular cover and variant cover. Catwoman number 24, the regular cover and the variant cover. If I had to ju choose just one, I would probably just have gotten the variant, but he had both, so I picked up both. Wonder Woman annual number four. Don't really need to say anything else about that. Then from Xenoscope, I picked up Shang number one, number two, and number three. I'm looking forward to reading this. Robin Hood Justice number two. I'm hoping I can find number one. And then the free comics, for free comic book day, I got uh, Donald Duck. Inside, first appearance of Feathery Duck. Okay, that's a million dollar comic right there, right? And I picked up Investigators. Then I picked up The Loud Noise, or, excuse me, The Loud House. Looks like it's interesting. And last of all, Spider Woman number three. Didn't see a variant cover. All I saw was this one. Which, I guess that's a good thing because I didn't have to buy two. And that's what I picked up at the comic shop. More than I wanted to. I figured I made you wait long enough and I'd go ahead and start working on the base for the Incredible Hulk. Basically all you're going to see me do right now is clean it up and uh, attach some of the pieces to the base. Then I'll prime it off screen, and once that's dry, I'll do more on another video.
I don't feel like digging out my files or my sandpaper. That's so I'm just going to use the edge of the blade to smooth this off.
I'm basically going to put everything but the track and the actual model on. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and uh, then I'll paint it. Okay, let's do a little bit of uh, Eternal My Light project. Start with Alpha Flight number 13. Really nice shape. Uh, it's from August of 1984. Like I said, it's a really nice shape one. Uh, and here's number 15 with Submariner versus Marina. And number 16, Submariner appears. And number 18. Now back in the mid-90s, I decided I'm going to sell my Valiance. And I did, except for one title. One title I never even put up for sale. Archer and Armstrong, number zero. And number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Now these were read once and put away, put in bags and boards. I took them out of bags and boards just a few minutes ago. So they were in the same bags and boards for 25, 26 years. Which was not really all that great. Let me get them right in the right order here. Here's number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Number 11 featuring featuring uh, Solar. Number 12. Number 13, and this is a Rags Morales cover. Number 14. And number 15. Here's number 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I kind of want to reread these. <laughs> Here's number 21. Mike Fosberg did the art. Number 22. Number 23. Number 24. Number 25. What? This is Eternal Warrior. It's number 26. It's Archer and Armstrong 26. As well as Eternal Warrior 26. 
And that's it. That's it for this episode of the e Eternal My Light project. Or this segment. Hope you saw a few things you haven't seen for a while or may have never seen. All of these comics are over 20 years old. They were in... Here, here's one of the bags and boards they were in just to show you. And this is a poly bag. <laughs> Every one of them had brown on one side. That's one of the reasons why I need to change them out. Uh, that, and, uh, of course, I'm putting everything in mylar. So, let's look at a few GI Joes. First, I'll zoom in. And we'll start off with Thunder from 1984. He came with uh, a light green helmet, which I don't have, a green radio headset, which I do have, uh, a black monocular, which I have, and a black visor, which I also have. Need to get him a green helmet. But uh, that's Thunder. And this came with the uh, self-propelled cannon, the slugger tank. Next, this is Alpine. And he came with a black submachine gun, a pickaxe, and a grappling hook, of which I have the pickaxe and the submachine gun. Also gets a tan backpack, which I don't seem to have. This is kind of a loose figure. He's not going to stand up. If you have loose figures and you want to figure out how to tighten them so they'll stand up, go check out the Toy Paloya channel. It's got a lot of uh, good information on how to restore vintage uh, action figures. This is Storm Shadow. He came with a black katana, black nunchucks, black bow, and black backpack. I have the bow, I have the katana, I have the short sword with the wakazushi or whatever it is. And again, very, he'll stand up, but he's very loose. don't have the backpack. Next up I have Zartan and he's missing them, uh, he's missing a lot of parts, so I'm not even going to take him out of the plastic, I think. Uh, yeah, I will. He came with the uh, Chameleon Swamp Skier. Had a black pistol, a chest piece, and two thigh pieces. All of that's missing. And uh, what was on his back was missing, so he's missing a lot of stuff. Far from a complete figure. What surprises me is the bands that hold them together have not dry rotted. They're still tight. 
This is Wild Bill. And he came with the uh, Dragonfly Assault Copter, which I don't have. He kind of need to get. Other than that, no accessories. Now this one, the uh, yeah, the band is kind of loose on this one. And here we have Cobra Commander. And I actually have a, uh, a rather faded copy of his uh, sheet. Cobra Commander came with the hooded Cobra Commander was first available as a mail-in after offer in 1984, never released in stores. Hooded Cobra Commander was available mail order between 1984 and 1990. Came with a black laser pistol, so I need to find him a black laser pistol. See, now that's what happens when they dry rot, so I will definitely have to replace his... Uh, his band that holds them together. Put this one off to the side because I need to get an O-ring for him. Next, Televiper. Televiper came with a black scanner, a black backpack, and a black hose that attached to the scanner to the backpack. And look at that. We have the hose. And we have the backpack, which I guess it goes on the bottom there. So this actually is a complete figure. I like it when they're complete. Next up, Snow Job. Came with a black laser rifle and two white skis, two black ski poles, and a white backpack. That could hold the pole, skis and the poles. Well, there's the, there's the backpack. All I need is the skis and poles. This is bazooka. He was part of the fourth series from 1985. Came with a black bazooka missile launcher. Green backpack and a green helmet. Don't have his backpack and helmet, but there's his missile launcher. Which... Not exactly what I would call a bazooka. It looks more like a law. Last up today, I have Major Blood. This was another one that was originally a mail-in offer. Uh, let's see what it says. Major Blood was first available as a special unadvertised mail-in offer in late 1982, early 1983. Major Blood was released carded as part of the second series 1983. He came with a black rocket pistol and a black backpack, and I have both. So he's a complete figure, and this I'm assuming was the carded one.
And that's all the GI Joes I'm going to show you today. I got home yesterday and there was a package waiting for me. And I went, what? I, I didn't know. Did I order something? Okay, I bought something, but, but it shouldn't be here till next week. Surprise! It showed up in three days. Uh, the packing wasn't that great, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, I paid a total of thirty-one or thirty-two dollars, thirty-one dollars and thirty-one dollars and thirty-one cents, including shipping and tax. Let me show you what I got. I got Daredevil number forty-four. This looks to be in very good to fine. Maybe if I clean it up a little bit, it'll hit fine. Then I got, let me turn these over, Star Spangled War Stories, number 150, it's from uh, May of 1970. The Daredevil was uh, September 1968. So we're looking at Silver Bronze Age stuff here. Uh, this is very good plus. Another copy of Action Comics number 378, because you can never have too many Action Comics 378. I would rate this in good, possibly good plus. Got Tales to Astonish number 84. Oh, very good to find. That's what I'm rating it as. Now, when I looked at these, and when I made my... Oh, darn. It's torn. Um, good to very good. But when I looked at these, I was thinking, you know, low, low to low mid-grade. Yeah, I, I'll bid five bucks a piece on them. It didn't go that high. I got The Adventures of the Man-God Hercules by Charlton Comics. This is number 13 from September 1969. The Tales to Astonish, by the way, is from October 1966. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., number 5. And this looks to be in fine condition. Maybe fine minus. And it's from October 1968. Gorgeous Stranko cover there. Captain Marvel number six. And it's got... Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this is good plus. Because it's a gorgeous copy, but it's got these... Uh, it's got color missing and that's probably from tape. That's why you don't use clear tape. Use painter's tape. Blue tape. Good stuff. Can't go wrong with painter's tape. Uh, anyway, this is October 1968. And then I got King Size Special Daredevil number one. Electro and his emissaries of evil. Um, I would rate this very good plus. Presents really well. Has one long crease here and uh, about a half inch spine split. It could rate as fine, but I would go very good plus on it. Love me some Gene Colon artwork. And that's what I got in the mail. Two, four, six, eight silver and bronze age comics for $31. Bargains are out there. Deals are out there. You just have to look for them. Take a chance. 
I figured what I wanted to pay. I put in the maximum I was willing to pay. It didn't go that high. I paid a lot less than what I was willing to go. I would have gone $5 a piece for these all day long. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I actually had a lot of fun today making that. I made it in just little short segments throughout the day and uh, didn't know from one segment to the next what I was going to do next and have not yet decided what order I'm going to put them in. So it's going to be a surprise to me as well as to you. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you saw a few things you've never seen before. Uh, I hope you saw that you can get good bargains if you if you're patient, don't go crazy. Put in a bid. If you're doing it on eBay, put in a bid for what you're willing to pay and forget about it. You'll either win or you won't. If you don't, it's no big deal. And if you do, pay for it. <laughs> so that's it for this uh, hodgepodge of videos. And I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. But in the meantime, don't forget, whenever you get ready to handle your collectibles, wash your hands. Matter of fact, just wash your hands all the time. It's good for the comics. It's good for the toys. It's good for your collectibles. It's good for your health. See you next video. Bye.